Hello and welcome everybody from uh, Tirana, the capital of uh, Albania. In this vlog I will tell you very interesting uh, stories about Enver Hoxha, the dictator of uh, Albania and about the communist uh, era of uh, this country. So I really suggest to watch uh, this vlog because I prepare a lot of uh, interesting facts. So Enver Hoxha was born on the 16th uh, October of uh, 1908 and uh, he was studying in, uh, in uh, Montpellier. He didn't take it very serious, so he lost uh, the scholarship. So what happened uh, after, he moved uh, to Paris and uh, at least uh, he gained uh, the French uh, uh, language uh, skills, uh, which helped him to get a job in uh, Brussels at the consulate of uh, Albania. After his return uh, to Albania, he was worked for the Lyceum in, uh, in Korcha. So it was a very interesting uh, fact uh, that he was uh, uh, teaching uh, moral. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the, the man who was uh, responsible for murdering uh, more thousand uh, people was uh, teaching uh, moral at that time and also uh, French uh, language. Italy uh, took over Albania and um, under these uh, conditions in 1941 the Albanian uh, Labour Party was formed and uh, also Enver Hoxha took part of this, uh, of this uh, party. And, uh, in 1943 he was uh, elected already as the prime uh, secretary of, uh, of the party. Enver Hoxha became uh, the uh, head of the state uh, and the communist party took over in, uh, in Albania. Enver Hoxha constructed uh, approximately 70,000 uh, bunkers or even more. He was frightening the people of Albania that uh, foreign invasion can be expected and that's why uh, they should build a lot of uh, bunkers. So I was just walking uh, near a park and uh, I found uh, this uh, bunker very random uh, <laughs> way. But uh, there are a lot of, lot of uh, bunkers in Albania so you can find them everywhere. This was also uh, tool for Enver Hoxha to keep the control because uh, he was frightening the people and uh, this is how uh, uh, he was claiming that he's protecting uh, the country and the people and they believed him. So it's very interesting that you can find uh, all of these bunkers everywhere. They were uh, supposed to accommodate uh, one, two people in case of uh, atomic uh, attack or uh, in case of an invasion. As you can see, there's also a hole uh, which was uh, supposed to use it for uh, gunfire in case of uh, foreign invasion to fight uh, to fight back. Because of that reason, also local people at the high school were trained. Uh, just normal, ordinary people were trained to shoot uh, with guns, and uh, it was really crazy that. Uh, Enver Hoxha trained uh, his whole nation like a partisan uh, to, in case of uh, a war, to have uh, enough uh, soldiers. Enver Hoxha died in 1985 and the Communist Party decided to make a very huge memorial museum uh, for him. This is the pyramid. It's a very, very huge uh, building and uh, it was completed in 1987. Unfortunately, now we cannot approach it uh, from closer range. I could just use uh, my height uh, to, to see a little bit uh, from outside uh, this uh, building. So after the fall of the communism, uh, of course, they didn't want it any memorial for, uh, for uh, Enver Hoxha. So what happened? Uh, uh, it was a big discussion. Should uh, they destroy all the building or uh, what should they do that? Some opinions uh, said that uh, uh, it's better to keep it uh, not as a museum of the dictator, but as a museum of uh, that uh, communist uh, period. So, as you can see currently, uh, there is a uh, construction and a renovation. So, there are uh, some uh, very nice uh, plans uh, what to do with it. And uh, we will see maybe some years later uh, how it will be used. Well, I tried to get closer and uh, I met an old uh, security guy. I was asking him if, uh, he can, if I can go inside uh, 
he said no but uh, his English was uh, well not very limited it was almost uh, nothing so he was just uh, pointing at his clock and he said six six then he said six but I didn't know what <laughs> does this mean uh, that uh, he can take me inside at 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. or well uh, I didn't know that then he asked uh, if I am Polish maybe uh, he can also speak Polish but uh, well that was not an option because I know in Polish only some uh, some words so well uh, I think it's uh, also not very very interesting uh, currently because it's a construction area uh, before this trip I was reading that uh, it's an abandoned place and uh, it's not uh, not in use so uh, you can visit it and also skateboarders uh, use it but uh, as you can see it's already closed uh, under construction so after the liberation of Albania and Hoxha took over uh, the country's leadership and uh, he was the supreme leader it was a very difficult uh, job because uh, the country was in ruins after the second uh, world war and uh, the partisan uh, fights so he had a lot to reconstruct and you can imagine that the uh, literacy rate was only 5% uh, of the population uh, could uh, read and write and that was uh, raised to 90% so he built a lot of schools and uh, also uh, universities were established to uh, uh, train uh, teachers uh, for, the, for the population uh, also the first uh, railway line uh, was uh, constructed after the second world war and uh, country got uh, electricity uh, this was also something new uh, also uh, small villages uh, uh, got uh, electric uh, wires this was uh, somehow the advantages of the communism also he was uh, struggling to wipe out uh, an epidemics because malaria was uh, very frequent uh, in Albania but uh, he could uh, he could fight it uh, back I just try to uh, try to uh, explain not just the disadvantages and the horror times but also the advantages uh, which happened uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Albania uh, so also uh, he led the country to agricultural independence and uh, agriculture was uh, developed a lot uh, under, under his uh, reign well uh, what were the disadvantages of course everybody who disagreed and uh, who was against uh, communism uh, was uh, imprisoned and sent to concentration and labor camps um, but these were not just uh, um, political uh, opponents but also people who are uh, who were want wanting back the old uh, king uh, of Albania uh, Zog uh, so this was uh, very anti-democratic uh, because nobody could explain his opinion uh, if they did that uh, they were imprisoned he outlawed uh, private property and uh, also religions and converted the country to an atheist uh, country so uh, temples, churches, mosques were all uh, closed and converted to some kind of uh, government uh, institutes or uh, they all, always found another use uh, for these uh, uh, saint uh, buildings and also it was forbidden to leave the country more 10,000 of uh, dissidents were executed and to keep the terror it was not just like uh, uh, if somebody tried to, to uh, uh, escape the country um, that uh, he was executed or uh, transferred to a, a labor camp but also uh, his or her relatives so this is how uh, uh, the dictator tried to uh, convince uh, people to stay in Albania because sometimes uh, the whole family was uh, sent to the concentration camp even though only just one member of the family tried uh, to leave uh, Albania on the 20th October of uh, 1944 the National Liberation Committee founded uh, the democratic uh, founded the democratic uh, uh, government of uh, Albania and uh, they voted uh, Enver Hoxha as uh, interim uh, prime minister so we can uh, see uh, where does uh, that uh, lead so after the liberation of Albania a lot of uh, Albanian uh, partisans uh, crossed the border to Yugoslavia and uh, they were helping uh, Tito and uh, his partisans uh, and uh, the Red Army the Soviet Red Army to fight against uh, to fight together against uh, the Germans and uh, this was uh, of course successful as you know and uh, because of that Tito was very thankful to Enver Hoxha and uh, this was uh, the beginning of the 
uh, Albania and Yugoslavian uh, friendship, which uh, didn't last uh, very long. So this democratic front was mainly dominated by the Albanian Communist Party. So it was actually a uh, fake uh, democracy, but it was a good uh, strategy actually, uh, because uh, of course the citizens, the people were uh, uh, annoyed about uh, the last years and uh, the dictatorship of the fascist uh, Italians. So that's why uh, it was uh, good to label themselves as democratic, but actually they were uh, members of the Communist Party. So what happened on the 2nd December of 1945, the first elections uh, were held after a uh, uh, lot of years and uh, only this uh, democratic front was allowed to participate, it was the only party and of course they succeeded 93% uh, 93% uh, voted on uh, them. So after the elections in, uh, on uh, 11th uh, January of 1946 uh, the People's Republic of uh, Albania was uh, officially established and uh, the former king before uh, the Italian occupation, uh, Zog, was uh, officially expelled. So this is uh, the concrete uh, uh, time when uh, Enver Hoxha became uh, the first man of the, of the state because he was the uh, prime secretary of the party. Enver Hoxha declared himself a Leninist, uh, Stalinist uh, person, leader and uh, he was really admiring uh, Stalin and uh, everything during his reign uh, is really characterized uh, that he wanted uh, be, to be just like uh, Stalin. In 1957 the first University of Albania was established, the State University of Albania and uh, the citizens uh, also got uh, scholarships so well uh, I would also like to present some uh, nice parts uh, uh, of the development uh, which happened uh, during uh, uh, Hoxha's uh, reigning. Albania had uh, the most cases of malaria in uh, the whole Europe. It was a big uh, problem when Enver Hoxha took over to fight against uh, these uh, pandemics. Well, of course we cannot compare it with the coronavirus which we have uh, currently, but uh, still um, it was a big uh, um, decision to dry out the swamp plants and uh, this is how malaria was uh, fought back and uh, between 1965 and 1985 uh, zero cases uh, were reported after so it was a totally successful uh, campaign. In 1949 uh, US and the UK uh, intelligence uh, services collected uh, the dissidents, uh, the Albanian dissidents who were uh, still uh, wanting the return of the older uh, Albanian king uh, Zog and uh, they were living and uh, they were emigrated to Greece, uh, Italy and uh, uh, <laughs> Egypt. So they were assembled uh, to Malta, Cyprus and Western Germany and they were trained uh, to infiltrate uh, in uh, the communist Albania. Well, what happened? There was a double agent of the CIA and uh, MI6 and uh, he leaked out the information to the Soviet Union. So um, it was... Uh, it was an unsuccessful campaign. These uh, infiltrated uh, Albanians, guerrillas, um, entered Albania in uh, 1950, but uh, they were all executed until 1952 because the Soviet Union uh, informed Enver Hoxha about uh, this uh, uh, strategy. As I mentioned before, the relationship between Yugoslavia and uh, Albania was very good after the liberation, but uh, Tito uh, made a lot of signs like uh, he wants to conquer Albania and uh, uh, Hoxha didn't like this and also Yugoslavia broke up uh, with uh, so the Soviet Union so uh, because of this and uh, moreover about uh, the conquering intentions of Tito to, to conquer Albania um, on the 1st July of 1948 Hoxha expelled all the technical advisors uh, of Yugoslavia from Albania all the agreements and uh, everything uh, which uh, belongs to their uh, um, friendship and uh, ally uh, relationship everything was declared uh, null and void so it was an official uh, breakup between the two countries an important uh, member of the communist party called uh, Jorge uh, was on the side of the Yugoslavians and uh, he said uh, it's very important to have such a strong ally like Yugoslavia um, well he was tortured and uh, hanged by Hoxha. 
So after the breakup in Yugoslavia, Hoxha needed uh, new allies and uh, that became the Soviet Union, which uh, supported Albania a lot. Between uh, 1948 and 1960, they uh, sent uh, 200 million dollars uh, to the country uh, for technical and infrastructural uh, expansions and uh, development. The relationship with the Soviet Union remained very strong after the death of uh, Stalin in 1953, um, which followed by 14 days of uh, national mourning. <laughs> it's a very interesting fact that uh, um, that was uh, much more than in the uh, Soviet Union. So, yeah, Hoxha ordered uh, four, two weeks of national mourning for the death of his uh, idol, Stalin. Hoxha assembled uh, the people on the main square uh, of the Skanderbeg Square, uh, currently called Skanderbeg Square. There was also a big statue of Stalin uh, was there. And uh, they must uh, give a 2,000 word uh, oath that uh, they will have uh, eternal fidelity and uh, they will be always thankful for the great uh, liberator and uh, their beloved father, uh, Stalin. The 20th Communist uh, Congress of the Soviet Union took part on uh, 1956 and uh, Khrushchev was uh, condemning in this uh, Congress the cult of uh, personality and uh, this angered uh, Hoxha a lot, of course, because his idol was Stalin. Khrushchev also renounced the expulsion of, the, uh, of Yugoslavia from the communist uh, bloc and uh, that also angered uh, Hoxha a lot and uh, it was another speech uh, by uh, Khrushchev that uh, all uh, communist countries just focus on the peaceful coexistence and shouldn't build any uh, personal cult so this was uh, like a trigger point uh, of uh, the breakup uh, between uh, the Soviet Union and Albania which uh, uh, happened uh, four years uh, later. In the same year, in 1956, uh, Enver Hoxha called for resolution for, uh, to confirm his place as the header of the communist, Albanian Communist uh, Party. And uh, this was uh, voted, uh, so he stand on his position. And everybody who voted against or uh, took position or had another opinion uh, was imprisoned. So they were communists, but uh, um, it doesn't matter, they were against Hoxha, so they were just uh, imprisoned. Of course, Soviet Union was not uh, agreed, uh, didn't uh, see this uh, very, very, very good. And um, it also made it uh, impossible to make uh, uh, Khrushchev-style uh, uh, reforms uh, in Albania, like uh, Khrushchev did in the Soviet Union after the uh, death of uh, uh, Stalin. After Enver Hoxha traveled to the People's Republic of uh, China, and met uh, the famous uh, dictator, I think you already heard about him, Mao Zedong. Um, and uh, with this uh, he embroiled in the Sino-Soviet uh, split. Uh, but uh, for Albania it was good because uh, the aid, the help uh, from uh, China, uh, inc sharply uh, increased uh, in the next uh, years. Thus the relation with the Soviet Union uh, declined rapidly and uh, moreover uh, at the time when uh, it was uh, very needed, uh, what happened? Uh, the grain shipments were reduced uh, very much and uh, this uh, happened when a uh, uh, flood-induced famine was uh, uh, very bad in, uh, in uh, Albania and uh, people were really starving and the Soviet Union uh, didn't send the grain uh, shipments. In the November of uh, 1961, Hoxha had a speech uh, where he called uh, Khrushchev a revisionist, uh, anti-Marxist uh, uh, man, leader, and uh, he also said that Stalin was the last uh, real communist uh, uh, leader of the Soviet Union. Well, the reactions uh, were uh, uh, expected already. Uh, Albania was excluded from the Warsaw Pact and uh, all nations uh, participating in the Warsaw Pact and uh, also the Soviet Union uh, broke uh, all diplomatic uh, relations uh, with Albania, so they uh, remained actually alone at, at that time. Um, Soviet Union also tried to claim control of the sub submarine uh, base and uh, the Communist Party of Albania uh, rapidly made a new law that uh, no foreigners uh, can own a port in, uh, in Albania, so that uh, also uh, didn't uh, happen. In 1960, a big electrification campaign uh, began and they expected uh, to have electricity in the whole uh, country. 
uh, by uh, 1985. Instead of that uh, uh, goal, uh, they already accomplished uh, this in uh, 1970, just in 10 years, and Albania became the first country of the world with uh, full uh, electri uh, electricity. 1969, uh, uh, the uh, taxes uh, were uh, expelled, so people didn't need to pay uh, taxes. And uh, also a lot of uh, schools and uh, hospitals were constructed during uh, that uh, period. In the meanwhile, his uh, personal cult uh, was uh, increasing. He was named the supreme leader and uh, the great teacher, and uh, his portrait was everywhere in uh, schools, in, uh, in hospitals, and uh, yeah, everywhere in the country. Um, this was not everything, uh, there were also quotes uh, from, from him and uh, these quotes uh, were uh, in school books like uh, he can uh, also teach uh, everything and uh, the whole population of, of the country. Some sources uh, claim uh, that uh, he built a more intensive, more stronger personal cult uh, than uh, Stalin and uh, it can be compared only to the dictator of uh, North Korea with uh, Kim. 1966, uh, in November of 1966, Mao Zedong uh, held a speech and uh, called Albania the last uh, real Marxist-Leninist uh, communist uh, country. And uh, he said that uh, if the imperialist uh, Americans or the revisionist uh, uh, Soviet uh, Union uh, would like to conquer Albania or uh, would offend uh, uh, Albania, they should. Uh, uh, count uh, with the wrath of the People's Republic of China. So, well, uh, this uh, speech was uh, really, really uh, strong because uh, it claimed uh, China to be a very big ally of, uh, of uh, Albania. Well, after the death of uh, Mao, also China, uh, People's Republic of China was uh, not uh, very uh, strongly communist and uh, they also welcomed uh, the President of the United States, uh, Richard Nixon, in uh, 1971 and uh, uh, Hoxha felt betrayed uh, because of this because uh, you know uh, China was against uh, the US uh, just uh, some years before and uh, some years later uh, also Tito uh, the Yugoslavian dictator visited uh, visited uh, China and uh, he was welcomed there so that was uh, the cherry on the cake because after this uh, Enver Hoxha uh, declared that Albania is the only uh, Marxist-Leninist country of the world. Of course, China didn't like this speech and uh, in 1978 uh, they cut off uh, all uh, help, uh, financial help and uh, everything uh, towards Albania. Um, so also the diplomacy uh, was uh, and the relationship between Albania and, uh, and uh, China was just uh, broken. And uh, in uh, the time of the modern history, this was uh, the first uh, first time when uh, Albania remained uh, completely alone and uh, without any any allies. Just some words about the Secret Service of Albania, which, which was called uh, Sigurimi. It has the same uh, model like uh, the East German uh, Stasi and uh, the Soviet uh, KGB. So, at the point of time, uh, every third Albanian uh, were either. At, the, at a labor camp or uh, interrogated and uh, I would like to advise to you if you travel to Tirana and you have more time than me uh, then uh, you can visit the House of Leaves this is a museum uh, where this uh, secret service, the secret police uh, was uh, uh, serving and uh, where the interrogations were held and uh, there you can find more details about uh, this uh, organization the citizens of Albania didn't know much about the problems and also about uh, the diplomatic issues because the media was controlled of course by the government and uh, they let uh, the people know only about uh, what was happy and what was uh, good and also that was uh, uh, very um, um, exaggerated like uh, uh, they had a very big uh, propaganda about it. It was not allowed to leave the country anymore and uh, they made a new law that uh, everybody who uh, thinks about uh, uh, emigrating and uh, leaving the country uh, must be in prison for at least 10 years and uh, the worst case uh, means uh, uh, that uh, should be killed so that was uh, a really really bad uh, 
uh, law made by the Communist uh, Party and also more uh, labor camps, uh, concentration camps were established. Uh, it was totally 14 uh, labor camps in Albania and in 1985 uh, 35,000 people uh, were in these uh, labor camps. Some hist history uh, tellers uh, uh, say that uh, at least uh, 5,000 people uh, who were not agreeing with the party, political uh, prisoners were killed, but uh, others uh, claim that uh, it, uh, <coughs> it's maybe 35,000. Uh, so we are talking about uh, a lot of people who tried to not obey to Enver Hoxha and uh, they were all uh, sent to concentration uh, camps. In 1967 uh, Enver Hoxha turned Albania to the world's uh, first uh, atheist uh, uh, country. He stated that the only religion of uh, Albania should be Albanianism, referring to uh, poetry from the 19th century, which is uh, Oshkiperi, uh, Omoishkiperi, which is uh, o, o Albania. Uh, well, it was very exaggerated and uh, some uh, history tellers uh, also make uh, some references to Hitler because, uh, you know, this was not just communist, but also uh, exaggerating and activating the national feelings uh, of the people. And it is really funny that uh, beards were also uh, banned in Albania. Everybody must have shaved because, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, beards were associated with uh, the uh, Muslim uh, culture and uh, so you know a lot of Imams and Orthodox uh, priests uh, have a long beard so uh, this was also not allowed I can't imagine what would happen if somebody an Albanian just walked out uh, to the street and uh, he had beard so the police or somebody could stop him and uh, tell well you should shave yourself or you will get imprisoned or I don't know how this uh, was actually working, but it's really crazy. And I was thinking that I couldn't uh, just walk like this with, with my beard uh, <laughs> uh, on the streets. Well, I think uh, um, if I was talking, <laughs> if I had been talking so lo so much about uh, the supreme leader, uh, then uh, I think I already would have got a bullet in my head. So, <laughs> in a speech in 1973, Enver Hoxha said that uh, the Western culture. Uh, is uh, really uh, against the socialist uh, uh, ethics and uh, values. So it's uh, they are holding concerts with screaming jungle music. I think uh, he was saying, he was uh, meaning uh, the rock uh, concerts. So I don't know. And uh, people are behaving uh, like animals, and uh, that's uh, that's the reason why the Western culture and the Western bourgeois culture must be cut off and uh, it was forbidden to listen to uh, uh, those uh, musics uh, from uh, Western uh, Europe. During those times Albania was the most isolated country in uh, Europe and uh, Enver Hoxha was very proud of it but uh, well the economics uh, were not uh, growing uh, like this and uh, if you want to ser search about a keyword or want to do a research about this historical keyword it is called isolationism. Uh, well, uh, this can be studied uh, uh, at the most uh, on uh, the history of uh, Albania after they also broke up with uh, China. So they were completely isolated, denying uh, every influence of the Western Europe. In 1981, Enver Hoxha ordered uh, more executions uh, of the communist, uh, of members of the communist uh, party and from the government. Well, uh, this was a, a big surprise, but. Uh, a lot of people were called uh, traitors and um, the second most powerful man uh, of Albania uh, the right hand of Enver Hoxha, Mehmed Shehu was uh, found uh, 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 dead he committed suicide uh, but uh, a lot of people believed that uh, it was just an arranged uh, suicide it uh, was uh, he was also killed he was called uh, subsequently a traitor and also people uh, were believing that uh, he was communicating with uh, uh, foreign uh, intelligences uh, and uh, tried to get uh, the seat of uh, Hoxha. In 1973 Enver Hoxha suffered a heart attack and uh, he never fully recovered from that and also had uh, diabetes since uh, 1948. So his condition uh, became uh, worse and worse uh, in the beginning of the 80s. On 11th uh, April of 1985 uh, he, he died. 
It was again uh, his uh, heart uh, problems. He suffered a heart attack uh, several times, so this led uh, to his uh, disease. Of course, it was a big uh, funeral held here at the Skanderberg uh, Square, and uh, Ramza Alia took over the leadership of the country uh, in the same uh, communist uh, structure. A lot of uh, foreign delegations wanted to participate in the funeral, but uh, Albania didn't let anybody in. And uh, also, when uh, the Soviet Union sent uh, its uh, condolences, um, the leader of the Communist uh, Party, Albanian Communist Party, uh, uh, stated in an official uh, press conference that it's totally unacceptable. So when Hoxha died at the age of uh, 76, uh, Albania was the third poorest country of the world and uh, four decades of collectivization led uh, the people of the countryside uh, near to starvation. They were still using uh, technology from uh, the 20s. Uh, it was a very undeveloped uh, country. Yes, I forgot to mention when I said it was the third uh, poorest country of the world that the GDP was uh, only 15 uh, US uh, dollars. One more story which I heard about Enver Hoxha that uh, he also executed uh, high school crushes who were uh, denying him. And uh, uh, when uh, he had the scholarship in Montpellier, uh, one uh, one guy was helping him to get the scholarship and uh, also there was another uh, friend of him who uh, gave uh, rent, uh, an apartment uh, to him in uh, Paris and uh, both of them were also executed. So this was the vlog about uh, the dictator of Albania, Elmer Hoxha and about the communist uh, history of the country. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this vlog and if that's so then please uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, well, I really enjoyed it, uh, talking about it and also do the research uh, for the input of uh, these recordings because I'm really interested about uh, the history of the 20th century and about uh, dictators and uh, communism. So it's like a special topic uh, for me. I hope that you also uh, attracted to this and uh, you were not uh, bored about uh, these uh, details and facts. One more funny story that I would like to tell you. People were looking very strange on me when I was making the recordings. Well, um, I don't think that they uh, understood the Hungarian part when I was taking the Hungarian version of uh, this vlog, but uh, probably they, were un they understood uh, English or at least uh, they were uh, surprised when they heard uh, the name of the Hoxha. Um, also, a younger girl uh, walked uh, across the street when I was making the recording at the villa, at the house of uh, Enver Hoxha, and uh, he was uh, laughing at me very hard. I don't understand why, but, well, I, uh, I don't care if, uh, if, uh, if that make, uh, made her happy and made her laugh uh, that I am talking about uh, uh, he, uh, her country's uh, story, then uh, it's up to her. Well, and even on the street uh, people were looking at me, uh, what is uh, this uh, camera and uh, why I'm taking these recordings. But uh, nobody said anything actually, so I wasn't stopped on the street and uh, uh, it was all okay. Uh, well, uh, this was then everything. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and uh, goodbye.